This program contains material of a disturbing nature. Viewer discretion is advised. For the past several months, Caroline Williams has been plagued with excruciating back pain. Now she's discovered an unsettling new symptom. I was doing a lot of dishes, doing a lot of, you know, cleaning, laundry, and I started to get a rash in between my fingers. Little red bumps, and they were very itchy. Initially, I just thought it was from dry skin, from doing so many dishes, from chemicals. But over the next few weeks, the rash on Caroline's hands starts to spread. It progressively went down my hands, all the way down my wrists to maybe your mid-arm. Eventually, the rash has become so severe that Caroline decides to see a doctor. He said it was just dermatitis. Here's some steroid cream. Dermatitis is a term used to describe inflammation of the skin. Common examples are eczema, dandruff, and some allergic reactions. For weeks, Caroline applies the steroid cream. But the cream never worked, you know? So it got to the point where it's just, it's just so bad. And I couldn't use my hands anymore. They were so cracked, bleeding, painful. But after several months, Caroline notices that the rash has even spread to her head. My scalp was itching so badly, and I was developing mounds of things. And they would itch so bad. And if I scratch them, then debris would come out of them. They were just like fibers. They were more plasticky looking. Caroline showed me the fibers, and she said, this came out of my body. And I said, Caroline, how do you dig things like this out of your body? Todd can't understand how his wife can be experiencing so many odd symptoms. I found myself uh, believing in one minute and not believing it the next. I thought that perhaps it was her body somehow reacting because she had all these crazy rashes. He kind of was a bit disbelieving and saying, go to the doctor and hopefully we'll figure this out. Over the next three years, Caroline sees countless specialists in an attempt to get to the bottom of her mysterious illness. I was diagnosed with Lyme disease, um, mild rheumatoid arthritis, and ankylizing spondylitis. But none of the doctors can give her a definitive explanation. I think at that time we counted 17 diagnoses. It was ridiculous. How, how can she have all of these things? While Caroline searches for an answer, the bumps on her scalp develop into lesions. They were raised patches. They would itch very bad. And eventually, Caroline notices the lesions spread to her back. It feels like there's something crawling underneath your skin. It makes you feel scared. One morning, as Caroline is getting out of the shower, she points out the lesions to her husband, Todd. It looked like something coming out of her back. I remember going to grab it, and it pulled back in. I told myself later, I said, maybe, you know, that's something else. Maybe I was pulling subdermal tissue. In the end, you, you go back and forth because you don't want to believe this. I didn't know what was going on. I couldn't breathe. My heart was racing. I was in denial and unaware of what she was dealing with 24-7. So it was scary. And uh... sorry. <laughs> By now, Caroline has been suffering from steadily worsening symptoms for six years. I wasn't getting any better, and it was dragging on and on and on. I was about as low as I've ever been. Then, through a friend, she learns about infectious disease specialist, Dr. Neelam Upal. She had been sick for actually several years. She's gone through multiple treatments. So what she had was a multiple areas on her skin with arrhythmatous papular lesions and a big excoriated lesion on her scalp. And 
the relations were really open and weeping and crusted. And Dr. Upal believes Caroline's symptoms point to one diagnosis. Filariasis is a disease affecting humans and animals caused by a microscopic group of parasites called filarial worms. Dr. Upal believes that microscopic worms are triggering Caroline's joint pain and skin lesions. If this is untreated, it will eventually enter most of her vital organs. And if it gets into her heart, she can have congestive heart failure and eventually death. One of the scary things about filarial worms is that they can infect several parts of the body. When they get into the skin and joints, they trigger a condition called cutaneous filariasis, which can cause skin problems, joint pain, and inflammation. But if the worms reach the lymphatic system, that can lead to a terrifying disease known as elephantiasis. Elephantiasis is caused by obstruction of the lymphatic system. The filarial worm can survive in the human body for five to seven years. They are very highly productive. The life cycle of the filarial worm begins with a mosquito. When an infected mosquito bites a human, hundreds of tiny larvae swim into the bloodstream. And from there, they travel to different parts of the body. And it's not just humans that are at risk. The worms also infect cattle and even dogs. Infestations are rare and mostly limited to Asia, Africa, and parts of South America. Dr. Paul suspects Caroline was bitten by a mosquito that had been infected from an unlikely source. I read up on where it's endemic, um, and one of the countries was Argentina, and that's where we had gotten our dog. The dog had symptoms of filarial disease with his skin lesions, skin nodules, and other ulcerative lesions. So being that, the dog was frequently bit by mosquitoes, uh, and so was uh, this patient. So the probability of the dog transferring the parasite to the patient is very high. Caroline's dog was subsequently treated, and no other members of the family have shown any symptoms. One year later, treatment for Caroline's condition is ongoing. Dr. Paul gave me um, permethrin cream, she gave me an antibiotic, and she gave me a couple of antiparasitics. It's definitely improving, finally. It's a little painful at times, but in general, I'm definitely getting better.